They say expectations are the thief of joy. The funny thing is, too, when you're talking about sports, I think a lot of the time, the root of the argument starts in the expectations. We're having a, a, an argument about a situation, and the root is we have such different expectations. We're never going to see eye to eye in this discussion, right? It's so completely subjective. And so I sit here today, what, 24 hours, 48 hours from the Warriors preseason opener, and I ask Dub Nation, what is y'all's realistic expectations for this season? Let's go through the Western Conference because I have six teams in theory on paper that I feel, okay, they're probably better than the Warriors as currently constructed. Let's start with number one, Oklahoma City. Surprise, surprise. I think the consensus number one seed in the Western Conference coming into the season, you've got a prime SGA. You've got year two Chet Holmgren. By the way, they add Alex Caruso right? And Isaiah Hartenstein, you know, address the size issue. And so I think most people consider them the favorites to come out of the West at the start of the season. Okay, that's one. Number two, the Dallas Mavericks. You've got to respect the reigning Western Conference champions, right? And, you know, I, that midseason trade, both of those midseason trades last year for them really has changed the trajectory of of this organization. You get Daniel Gafford and you get PJ Washington and you saw how important they were to last year's run. They don't make that move. I don't know how relevant they are. I think we, we may be still having the same Luca Kyrie, can they fit conversation? But now, you know, again, they've sniffed the finals. They bring in Clay Thompson. Um, year two, Derek Lively. He's going to probably take a significant jump playing the center position, right? I don't like that they lost Derek Jones Jr., I think he was super important to last year's run. I was surprised they let him walk to the Clippers. Now, they replaced him with Najee Marshall, who I like him. I just don't know that he's that point of attack defender. I, I don't know about that. They're going to give Quentin Grimes that opportunity as well, right? And then Clay is going to enhance the spacing on the floor. We all understand that. But you, you, again, on paper, you've got to put Dallas ahead of the Warriors right now. And then Minnesota. I haven't had a chance to really talk about that trade uh, publicly on YouTube. I think it was a patron podcast here. I, I like what they did. I mean, Big Jelly, a.k.a. Nas Reed, I think is going to step into the cat role. I know you talk about salaries and reputations and Julius Randles and All-Star. No, this is a new setting, homie. You got to come off the bench. Plus, it's better for your game anyway. He can pound the ball. And maybe Minnesota gets back-to-back -back six men of the year and there are different dudes. Wouldn't that be crazy, right? But I like Randall with their second unit, Nas Reed in the cat role, and then Dante DiVincenzo is going to take some of the load off an aging Conley, right? You got Ant with the Olympic rub, the Wolves. We'll see. We'll see. You know, there, it, was, it was an aggressive move, but one that had to be made for salary. But you can pencil them in as a playoff team at this point right now. Um, those are, I, I feel like now I'm going to draw a line. Those are the three, right? And ironically, weren't they kind of the three last year? At least by the midway point, it was like, oh, these three teams have kind of separated themselves. So that hasn't changed in that respect. Denver. Now you lose. What's the, what, what, what's the dude's name up in Toronto now? Now he's lost, but you lost KCP to Orlando, right? We no one liked that. But what's the guy, uh, Bruce Brown, is, you lost him the year before. And those two guys were such key components to their motor, their perimeter defense, and their toughness. And so that's a tough blow. At the same time, you got to respect the Joker, right? He is so dominant. I'm not sure, you know, how much he needs around him to, to pull a team at least into the playoffs, right? And I also believe Mike Malone still one of the more underrated coaches in the league. He has a really good balance between motivation, X's and O's. I like his temperament. He, he's feisty. He's, he's a coach's coach. And so I put Denver there. How about the Suns? The Suns low-key had one of the sneakier, better moves. I will, sneaky's not even sneaky. I, I, I got to remember who I'm talking to. Y'all know. Adding Tyus Jones, that just the perfect floor general for them. Would, would you love for him to be 6'4", 6'5"? Sure. Right, He's a little undersized, but he is one of the rare true point guards in the league where that's his disposition. 
right, to, to set the table and create and distribute. And you heard Brad Beal say, hey, now we can all get back to our natural positions. And so the talent is undeniable with the Suns roster. However, when you look at their depth, when you look at their depth, they've got these high motor physical guys who are always chipped up because that's how they play. Plumlee, O'Neal, Grayson Allen. I like them. They're good role players. But if you look at the history of their careers, it's not like they have catastrophic injuries, but it's like an ankle, a sore back, a this, a that, right? Because that's their playing style. So I do question the Suns' depth a little bit, but that Tyus Jones acquisition, yeah, I don't know how you don't like that. Six, Memphis Grizzlies. Y'all forgot about Memphis? Y'all forgot about Ja? I think that Ja is going to be on a revenge tour. And I think that the Grizzlies, I wouldn't be surprised if they come out the hottest team out of the gate, at least in the Western Conference. Because, you know, I, I think that the fan base and probably the team themselves feel like they've just had a, a year robbed from them, right? And so if they're healthy, man, Desmond Bain, Jaron Jackson Jr., Ja, like, did y'all forget, right? They, they add Edie, who I think is going to be pretty effective, a good young coach, just a well-run organization. They draft so well. Um, disappointing that G.G. Jackson hurt his foot this offseason. He needs to take his time. But they've they've got some sneaky depth because they draft so well. And so those are six teams in that cutoff line of the play-in and actually being a playoff team that on paper, I think, as the Warriors are currently constructed, those teams might be better than them, right? Probably better than them, in my opinion. But here's the problem. You look around the rest of the Western Conference, and you could make the argument that everyone else could make the playoffs too, outside of Portland and Utah. And hell, people probably could make an argument for Utah, right? But it's just, it is a murderous row. Um, Kings fans probably feeling disrespected. I didn't put them in the top, top six, right? And the rest of the Pacific Division, the Lakers, the Clippers, Clippers, sneaky, sneaky moves. They, they, they've taken some big swings. If, if they hit, we'll see. Harden, I like, you know, I like to roast Harden. I've been doing it as long as this channel has existed, but I loved hearing him say, like, I don't really got anything to say. I'm just going to show you. I'm just going to show you. That's got me a little worried, right? Ty Lu, a, a good motivator. So, Man, it's, it's going to be tough. What are the realistic expectations? Mine are the six seed. If, if, like if things go well, if they can get five or six and they can get the five or six spot and avoid the play-in, I think, okay, that's successful. Now, once you get in, now it's like, what are the matchups? Do, do you draw a good matchup? Do you, do you have a bad matchup? It, it, from there, of course, you want to get deep into the playoffs and come out of the Western Conference. That's not my expectations. I want to see... Hopefully, them win one playoff round and get into a second round and, and not have to play in the play-in. But something that I think watching the Niners in these last few years has helped me do, and as cliche as it sounds, but enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey because like football, and I get it, that the pacing of the season is so much different and it's so much more dramatic, right? But uh, just to protect my delicate feelings watching the Niners now, it's like, I just got to enjoy the journey. And the Niners have given us a hell of a journey in this Shanahan run, albeit coming up short. But And maybe it's part of me just getting older, but it's like, what else can you ask for? Other than actually winning the Super Bowl, they've given you everything that you've asked for. And so I encourage y'all to kind of just enjoy this journey. We know Steph doesn't have a ton of time left. Let's just enjoy this journey. Yeah, we don't want to be disappointed, but maybe... Don't set your expectations as getting that fifth ring, and you'll have a little more fun enjoying the journey. I do have two predictions for you, and I wanted to get them out even before the first preseason game. One, I think the breakout player for this roster is going to be Moses Moody. It's going to be Moses Moody. And I think we all know the potential is there, and he hasn't got his opportunity. The other day, I was talking about how he was telling us that he's been working on his body movement, erasing the negative steps in his defense and, and being quicker in his first step, right? And how excited I was about that. And then you saw, and, and to be fair, that so the, uh, some footage leaked out, uh, I'll put it on here, of him blocking Steph in a shooting drill, right? And what you have to understand is part of that is 
Moses knows like there's, it's like a one or two dribble drill. Typically it's not like, Oh, you're on an Island and Steph can do what he wants. And, and he like clamped him up. Steph doing a one or two type of drill and Moody closed out and, and showed that seven foot wingspan. But it was that moment where I was like, nah, he, this is going to be it, man. If he's really going to be the defender that he could be, I think this is going to be the year for Moody. I wouldn't be surprised at all if by January, the talk isn't the, the Kaminga extension, it's the Moody extension. And that's no shade towards Kaminga. Hopefully it's the talk about both because that means we'd be doing really well, right? I think Moody is going to have the breakout year on this squad. And I also think Kyle Anderson, I think he's going to be very important. You might even want to call him the X factor, right? But what I also think is going to happen is he is going to be the guy that the fans are frustrated with because Kerr plays too much. Whether you want to see more Kaminga, you want to see big Quentin post, right? You want to see more Trace Jackson. I think when we lose games that we, and we're going to lose, right? 82 games here. And there's things, you know, we hit bumps in the season. I think he's going to kind of be the scapegoat of like, why does Kerr playing Kyle Anderson 30 minutes? Because, yeah, I think there'll be games where we see 25, 30 minutes of Kyle Anderson. I think that's how much of a fit he is. We'll talk about the new shooting mechanics that the, the videos have been released again preseason. The first breakdown will be out Sunday afternoon-ish, early or late morning. Um, what else do we have here? Underdog continues to support and sponsor the channel. Preseason basketball. I don't know about those picks. That's uh, As you know, like if you've been watching long enough, you don't know who's getting minutes and what's what, right? So I do have some picks for tonight's WNBA semifinals. I'm going Marina Mayberry, two and a half threes higher. She's just so aggressive. You saw in that game one in Minnesota, which she hit six or seven of them. I don't know what's going on with the sky, right? But I'm not sure how they, they uh, sent her over to the sun because that's put them over the top. That's just what the doctor ordered. And then you look at this Aces Liberty matchup back to Vegas they go it's it, the Aces bro it's it they don't have enough the Liberty are too hungry right but i do think as well as Sabrina has scored and kind of controlled the games i look for her to have higher than 5.5 assists maybe not as big as scoring numbers because they've been letting her turn the corner right they they when you when they run those double drag screens with Jeanquel and Stewie and they're kind of like all right Sabrina we're not we're going to let you turn the corner and so I expect her assist numbers to be up in this game three with those adjustments. But you can use the code in the description and get a bonus up to $1,000 on your first deposit. That's underdog. Um, but let me know in the comments what y'all are thinking here with your, your reasonable expectations. Some of y'all probably going to say, hey, man, I, I, expect them to, I expect them to be out of the play. If y'all want to be negative about it, right? But, you know, again, six seed right? Fifth, sixth seed. I think that's fair. Let me know. Hit that like, share, and subscribe. I'm out, y'all.